Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Brittany Suicionis with ABC Today and Big Brothers Big Sisters, and we have Chris Miller, who works for the Cape Girardeau Fire Department, and he's going to tell us more about his career path, his day-to-day -day life, being a firefighter, and all that comes with the job. So I'm going to pass it on to you, Chris. Awesome. Well, welcome everyone. Hope you're having a great day. So as Brittany said, my name is Chris Miller. I've actually been with the Cape Girardeau Fire Department for about three years now. Um, so I'm one of the newer firefighters. We do have people that serve for 20, 25, and even 30 years. And so um, this is a job that you can definitely do uh, for a lifetime and really make a career out of it. Um, I've been blessed to kind of have a unique path. Um, that's led me to um, the job that I do love today as a firefighter for the city of Cape Girardeau. And um, I've really enjoyed these last three years and look forward to continuing to grow and to develop as I progress um, with the fire department. Awesome, Chris. Now, can you provide us some insight about what was your, you know, education path? Um, do you have any certifications? What do you need to be a firefighter? Because I don't know any of that stuff. I think you just show up in a, a red engine and you bring a hose with you. So what, what is it that you need for uh, these students to better understand the education and training? Perfect. So my path is kind of unique and so I'll explain my path, but know that as a firefighter, um, you need to have a high school education. And then once you um, get through high school, then there's a, what's called the firefighter one and two class. And that is basically two classes into one um, that actually can be done in a semester. So about six months. And what happens is, is it basically gives you a basic understanding, knowledge and application of all the different aspects of the job. Now, there's a lot to learn. And so it's pretty fast paced. Um, but we're blessed here in Cape Girardeau that actually every spring, um, the Cape Girardeau Fire Department, the people that I work for, actually put on a class every spring hosted by the Cape Girardeau Fire Department right there here in our community so that if you're wanting to be a part of this, um, it is super easy and it's a class that once you graduate from high school can be completed in the evenings and then also on like the weekends too to accommodate those that work during the day. Now, additionally, you may know that the fire department responds on a medical call. So if someone is having a medical emergency, the fire department comes first, and then the ambulance, which is a separate agency and a separate group of folks, they come behind us and take that person to the hospital. So we as the fire department provide that first line care. And so you need to have what's called your EMT certification, um, which is the emergency medical technician. Um, and if you're a high school senior, um, you may know about the, the program with the Cape Girardeau Career and Technology S Center that actually allows you to be able to get your EMT license while you're still in high school. And that's a great program. But if you're like me and you really weren't sure what you wanted to do after high school, I actually got my class through the Cape CTC as well, but did it at night. And so like Tuesday and Thursdays, every week I went for a semester, six months long, and got that certification well. And that's what led me to the job today. So, but know that for me, I went to college. I actually got a bachelor's degree. I'm from Kansas City. And so I went to Kansas State University and got a bachelor's degree in elementary education. So you're like, oh, okay. you know that? oh my gosh. So yeah. So like, how does that relate to firefighting? Well, we'll talk about that. Um, and so I was like, you know what, I, I love working with people and I love teaching. And so maybe I want to go do that. Well, after going through that program, I wasn't quite sure, but I did also develop a love for working with college students. And that's what led me actually to pursue my master's degree, my graduate school degree in higher education and student affairs, um, which is actually what led me here to Cape Girardeau. I uh, came here in 2013. As I said, I'm from Kansas City. I knew nothing of Cape Girardeau, but I heard that there was a university here called Southeast Missouri State, and they had a position open as a residence hall director, which is someone that's actually in charge of the dorms on campus. And so I actually would be living and working with the students um, in their college campus living environment. And I love that. I love the people interaction and um, loved just being around people and helping and serving and doing everything I can. Now, you may know that college students are not great cooks. So 
the fire department would often come to the residence halls and you know someone would burn popcorn or they would not put water in their easy mac and cheese yes it actually happens and so i got to know some of the firefighters and i was like you know what i've always enjoyed um you know helping people in their greatest time of need i love helping people um and actually secret back in kindergarten i actually had a dream of being a firefighter and so this actually is a full circle experience for me yeah. I was like, you know what i want to try this and so luckily i was able while i was working at the university to get those classes that i talked about and be able to apply um, to be a firefighter here in Cape Girardeau. And as of 2017, um, I have been a firefighter with the city of Cape Girardeau. So it's been a great experience. My journey has kind of been, you know, here and there and all over the place. Um, but just know that whatever you end up doing, there's totally some different options. And it's really up to you um, which path you want to take. So definitely, um, men, women, anyone of all types, um, we love anyone. So come apply. That's really awesome. I'm kind of curious where I'm going to end up if I follow my kindergarten path. <laughs> um, so I had a quick question while you were talking about that. So for some of these courses, uh, do they talk? Like I know you mentioned like each spring, like what does that look like on the financial side of things? Um, and if there's like scholarships, you know, can you elaborate more on that? Absolutely. So one of the best things about um, these programs is they are really affordable. Um, and so with the fire department, because we host the program in, in house, I'm um, here in Cape Girardeau, that program, because it's taught by the city of Cape Girardeau firefighters themselves, um, we all actually, I have an instructor certification with the fire department as well, an additional thing that you can get. So that's what actually allows me um, the opportunity to teach and instruct at the fire department as well. And so the cost for a student is actually only $700. Oh, really? That, yes, it's in a great program that the City of Cape is able to help subsidize. So that gives you your book, um, helps provide everything you need. Um, a lot of people are on volunteer fire departments, which is like if you live in, you may live out in the county um, and you're familiar with, you know, the firefighters are volunteer. And so without your community, there is no fire department. Um, and so some of the people come from that background. But if you're like, I live in the city, I know nothing of firefighting, um, the Cape City Department will actually loan you firefighting gear um, to be able to do the class. And so that cost is $700 um, right now. It may increase a little bit in the future, but that cost does cover the class for firefighting. Now for the emergency medical part of the, the class, that's a different six months of class, if you remember that. That's going to be about $1,000, and that's run through the CTC. So both are really affordable. Um, so definitely, if you're looking for a way to get an education quickly and uh, for a job that you can help others, um, it's a great opportunity. And so, um, you know, that's why I was like, you know what, before I um, get any older, I really want to try this and see how this, uh, how this experience goes. Hey, that sounds awesome. So now, yeah. if students were to go through the Cape Girardeau Fire Department um, and say they just maybe want to move, like, does that training get transferred? Like, I know you're from Kansas City, and I'm not saying you're going to move back to Kansas City anytime soon, but say you were, can you go be a firefighter in Kansas City, or is it just valid to be a firefighter in Cape Girardeau? Good question. So actually, all of our certifications are what's called if SAC certified, um, so that's like if the word IF and then SAC, it's the International uh, Firefighter Service Council. And so that actually, um, your certifications are good um, throughout the United States. Now there's different states with some different requirements, um, but most states recognize these state certifications. And so that if I was to go to Kansas or to Nebraska or Iowa or someone, some other state, um, those certifications would still be valid. They may have a few differences, but they're still going to look for you to have that firefighter one and two, um, at least your ENT. Now, some fire departments um, require you to be a paramedic, which is basically that upper level medical certification. Um, that, that is a year long class and is a little bit more intense, but it just depends on what the fire department's looking for. And so that's something to be aware of. Um, as well, because there's different different variations of medical um, requirements. So, but yes, these certifications. Do 
So some departments, like up in St. Louis, um, the bigger cities, they are actually all driven um, by firefighter paramedics. And so something just to check into. Um, but here in our smaller community, um, we require you to be a firefighter and then have that basic medical certification as an emergency medical technician. Wow, I've never known any of this. This is so cool. Yeah, this is great. Now, let me talk about scholarships because I right. missed that part on the last question. Okay, so with the fire department, um, we do have a scholarship opportunity available. So know that if finances is a challenge for you, no worries. We do have a scholarship opportunity there and we're able to award one scholarship every semester. Um, so just know that, that that opportunity does exist. And then I know that um, various programs along with your state FAFSA or the federal FAFSA agreement with the CTC would help apply to your EMT certification if you were needing financial aid for that as well. So um, just know that there's opportunities to help um, financially. So yeah, that's really great. Now I did have a question. Um, so I have a few actually, but my next question is, I know you're a firefighter, okay? And for students who might, be thinking five, 10, 15 years, and I know you mentioned that there's some people who make a career out of this, you know, they're 25, 30 years in. What room for growth is there uh, being a firefighter? Do you constantly have to be doing like on the scene stuff? Um, and then with that, it, what is like the physical fitness part of it look like? Absolutely. So that's a great question. And so um, just know that as a firefighter, <clears throat> excuse me, as a firefighter, that is your first um, kind of level. So with the fire department, it's kind of a ranking system. And so every fire engine has three people here in Cape Girardeau. So there's what's called the captain, the driver operator, and the firefighter. So you were hired during your first year as a firefighter. Um, actually, we have what's called a probationary firefighter. Let me explain that. So during your first year, you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, I'm actually doing this job for the first time. I'm really scared, but this is what they told me about in school, so I'm gonna do it. So know that during your first year, um, there is help to guide you along the way. And so we have kind of what's called a probation experience, and that's not meant to be scary. Um, that is just meant to help get you the training so that that way, once you've had a year on the department, you're a full-fledged firefighter. And so um, everyone goes through that. So it's definitely a super helpful process. And then from there, um, you promote up to what's called a driver operator, where you are the primary driver of the fire engine. And then from there, um, the next level up is the captain. And the captain sits up front on the right side, opposite of the driver. And so they are kind of the ones in charge. They talk on the radio, they make sure the driver knows where to go. Um, they basically call the shots and make sure everyone's doing what they need to. And then, so that most people kind of sit within those three positions. Now, if you're like, well, you know, that sounds great, Chris, but in 15 years, I don't know if my body's gonna be able to, you know, drag hoses or carry heavy equipment. That's okay because we also have, um, after you're a captain, you can promote to what's called a battalion chief, and that person actually oversees um, kind of all of the stations every day. And so if you've ever seen like a Suburban running around town with lights on it, and it says fire on the side of it, um, that is that guy or lady um, that is in charge of the crews for that day. And so they're not actually fighting the fire, if there is a fire. They're more there to kind of oversee and keep everyone safe and make sure that everyone has what they need to do their job. And so that's a position. And then we also have various administration positions. Um, so there's someone who's in charge of training. We do a lot of training to help get our skills up. There's someone who's in charge what's called a fire marshal. And they oversee all of the new buildings and then also any renovations that are do being done to make sure that like the fire alarm system is up to spec where the fire sprinkler system is up to code to make sure buildings are being built safely. And so that's a position that you could have. And then from there, um, we have an, what's called an assistant chief and they kind of oversee the operations. And then there is the fire chief, which is actually kind of the, I like to call it the head of the, uh, the organization. And they really are, um, they're directing what we're doing and helping making sure that we're serving the citizens well. And so just know that you know, you're not just stuck at the firefighter level, that there is room for growth 
up the uh, up the ladder per se. Yeah, um, totally. <laughs> positions. Hey, look at that. Yes, you're right. We do <laughs> like ladders. And yes, there is that one truck in town. You may see it with the big ladder on top. Mm -hmm. That is actually um, staffed once again by a captain, a driver operator, and two firefighters. That truck is really big, and so we actually put four people on that truck because it has a lot of equipment, and it does take a lot of people to set up that big ladder and perform rescues if needed, so yeah. So what, what are you? What tier are you in? Okay, so I've kind of hidden it. I actually, in November, I did promote to driver operator. Okay, um, I saw that, yeah. I should, I should be actually saying that I'm driver operator, Chris Miller, but I often refer to myself just as firefighter. Um, so yes, so what that means is I actually, I actually am the primary driver of that big red fire truck, which for me is a little scary. Um, <laughs> I like my little red truck that I drive personally, but um, yes, it really isn't as scary to drive the big red fire truck. And yes, you do get to make lots of noise. It is really bright. Um, and you just need to make sure that you take the corners wide enough so you don't hit the curb. Very yeah. important. So yeah, so that is my position currently as the driver operator. Oh, that's awesome. Now, oh and also, oh, go ahead. You're fine. So as the driver, so I said talked about the driver part of it. So as the operator, what that actually means is that actually I'm the one who's pumping the water of the truck. So when I get out at a fire scene, if we are at a fire, I'm the one in charge of actually operating the knobs and levers to make sure that the firefighters, the captain and the firefighter, when they take the hose off, that that water is getting to the hose, um, that I'm hooking up to the fire hydrant to give them some more water. That is kind of my position on the operation side. But if we're at a medical call, I will hop out. I will assist the team with whatever they need, lifting the patient, assessing the patient, treating someone's wounds, et cetera. Um, that is what I'm there to do to be a part of our team. And we really are a team. So it's the three of us. Mm -hmm. And um, you may ask this question, Brittany, I may be stealing your thunder, <laughs> but we live and work together. Um, you know, we never know when people's emergencies are gonna exist, whether it's three o'clock in the afternoon or 3 a.m. in the morning. So the fire department here in Cape is on duty 24 seven. And so as a crew, the three of us work together 24 hours. So we start at seven o'clock in the morning and we're there all day, we're there all night. And then we come back home to our personal homes and families at 7 a.m. the next morning and a different crew takes over. So just know that we become really good team and we really need to make sure that we work well together um, to obviously help whoever may be in need. I didn't know that either. And that wasn't my next question, but you totally hit on what a day looks like doing yeah. that because I, I don't think sometimes people understand uh, what, you know, seven and then 24 hours means and that you're with that same kind of cohort of people um, to make sure that you're not just switching and you're with, Bob today, but Jim tomorrow. So no, that's really interesting that you mentioned that. So what does the fitness side of things look like for being a firefighter? Like, do you have to be able to do like 50 push-ups, or if you do five, like, what, do you know what I mean? What does that look like? Absolutely. So with the fitness side, we actually have as part of our hiring process what's called our physical agility test. And as you may, may re realize, you know, being a firefighter is a pretty physical job. But no, don't let that scare you. Um, because we've had people of all shapes and all sizes um, be able to pass our physical agility test. But things are that are in that test, um, it's not push-ups, but we have things like um, swinging. As you think about, okay, on the fire ground, you always see the fireman with the ax. And so therefore, um, swinging the ax or swinging like a sledgehammer is actually one of our divisions. Carrying a ladder is part of um, one of our one of our stations. Dragging a hose on your shoulder because that's a real life thing that you'll be doing off the fire engine. Um, and then also carrying hose up some stairs. And so I will tell you the secret to firefighting is being really good going up and down the stairs. So at school, don't use the elevator, use the stairs because that will help you become um, very healthy um, if you ever choose to pursue this career. And then also our last station of that is called the dummy drag. And so, you know, we are in this business to rescue people if needed. And so part of that is making sure that we have the strength um, to be able to lift someone and pull them to safety if needed. So um, it can be pretty physical, but if you're in the gym, if you've got a good heart, 
um, both mentally and physically um, and emotionally, um, you definitely um, can do, I believe you can absolutely do this job. That's great. Now my yeah. final question is, um, what advice do you have for students, uh, you know, who are just kind of in this career exploration phase of their lives and, you know, they might pursue higher education, which you have a very um, broad background of that, or they're looking into some sort of, you know, service training trade. Um, what advice would you give to those students who might be interested into this career or just kind of still exploring? Absolutely. So a lot of opportunities. And with technology these days, um, definitely you can see and learn a lot about a lot from just your home. Like right now, today I'm off. I'm at my home. Um, since we work 24-hour shifts, um, you know, I got off this morning and I've been home all day, which has been really nice and is really nice for people with families. But know that if you're looking at different careers, you know, every career has um, plus, pluses and minuses. So, you know, with our job, the schedule can be really long, but it does give you days off. With other jobs, you may work more days, but you're home every night, and that may be more appealing to you. So those are things to look at. Also with technology, know that um, the Cape Girardeau Fire Department does have a Facebook page, and so we post a lot about different things we're doing, whether it's trainings and incidents and things like that, and you'll be able to kind of see and be like, hmm, you know, that looks really interesting, or you know, maybe that's not for me, and that's okay. And then, um, I will tell you, we are currently in the process of making some more videos, um, trying to help people see, you know, what does a day in the life of a firefighter really look like? Um, on YouTube, um, there are several departments that have done that, um, but we want to make a Cape Girardeau version so that you can kind of see, here's what really goes on here in Southeast Missouri at the fire station each and every day. And so we are currently in production on that. But know that, you know, if you're thinking, you know, maybe I want to go to college. You know, as I told you, I actually have a master's degree. Is that required to be a firefighter? No, but you know, actually I believe some of the skills um, that I've learned in like helping people and talking with people have been very beneficial. And I've been able to apply those um, to what I do day in and day out. So um, know that if you're like, you know, I get, I'm gonna go get a college degree in business. And you'd be like, I don't know how that would ever translate to firefighting. Know that, you know, a lot of our job is administrative. Um, every call that we go on, we have to come back and write a report um, as documentation for what happened. And so that way there's always a record of, you know, how we help someone in case they need it for insurance reasons or et cetera. Um, you know, there's lots of different working parts of this. And any job um, really can provide some good life skills uh, for being a firefighter if you're interested in that. So encourage you to keep checking things out. Um, additionally, in the future, um, once we move past um, the, the coronavirus pandemic, we hope to welcome people back. Did you know you could actually do a ride along with the fire department? If you're over 18, um, that is something that you can actually do. And so know that that opportunity will exist again in the future. And um, we would love to have you. If you're like, I, I, I just want to come see firsthand. You can. I did it several times before I joined here in Cape Girardeau. And I was like, this is really cool. <laughs> I don't know but so yeah come check it out and always don't hesitate to reach out to the fire department with questions um we're always available via technology or at the four fire stations here in cape Girardeau. wow this is awesome thank you so much chris um, i hope our students uh, learned a lot from you and they're just getting those wheels turning about the different positions within the cape Girardeau fire department and i'm sure if they have any questions they know where to reach you guys so thank you so much Awesome. Thank you so much, Brittany. I appreciate it.